Mrs. Amelita Ming Ramos and members of the family of the late former President Fidel Valdez Ramos. They are not here. I was able to talk with them last Thursday, but uh, I hope somebody would transmit my message to them. Honored guests, my colleagues from the Armed Forces and Philippine National Police and their spouses, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. First of all, I wish to express my deepest condolences to me and family for the untimely demise of their loved one. I wish them all the fortitude to bear the erect irreparable loss. I am Gregorio Vigilar. The demise of our former president has now made me the oldest living West Point alumnus. I will be 94 years old next week. I thank the organizers of this gathering tonight for allowing me to be the first speaker. Growing old certainly offers some privileges. Thank God for that. I am certain that media has done a thorough coverage of FBR's passing and the countless services he has given the country and our people. The need for me to burden you No need for me to burden you all with the repetition of things already said many times in the media, uh, in the previous uh, programs here. But allow me to just dwell on the less, lesser known events that I can recall about FBR during the years I worked with him. This may help to explain how he was able to accomplish so much for the country and our people. In 1949, 74 years ago, both FBR and I were cadets at West Point, but he was a first-class man, let's remember with the graduating class, while I was only a lowly plebe. I met FBR only during my second month as a plebe when he became my platoon leader. Shortly before we met, I had finished my first month as a plebe without a single demerit. For those of you who have some knowledge of the strictly regimented life of cadets, you would readily see that a plebe to go through his first month without a demerit is unusual. However, considering that I had completed one year as a plebe at the Philippine Military Academy at Baguio before coming to West Point, my first performance during that first, point, first month was not really unexpected. Nevertheless, it earned for me certain privileges rarely given to a plebe. I was authorized to sit on the first captain's table during meals, where for one entire month, I was able to eat my meals without being hazed. But this bliss period ended when, on FBR's very first day as my platoon leader, he reported me for cigarette ashes on the floor during morning inspection. I was awarded three demerits for that offense. I have kept the delinquency report form in my personal files up to today. <laughs> my immaculate demerit-free record was shattered right then and there. FBR's classmates chided him for being chicken shit, which is cadet slang for one who has overly strict in his compliance with cadet regulations, and for being so against a, Philippine, a fellow Filipino. But FBR nonchalantly brushed aside these comments, telling his classmates that, and I quote, you guys have just have to understand 
that we Filipinos maintain a higher standard than others. While I was proud of FBR's response, I remained unhappy because of my shattered record. <laughs> As a cadet, FBR showed himself to be a consistent scholar. Countless times during that year that his classmates would call me down whenever my academic grades were not a as quite as high as FBR's grades during his plebe year. Unfortunately, before his graduation day, FBR contracted a rare liver, liver kidney ailment, which kept him in the hospital for several weeks. He had to undergo a difficult surgery where they took away half of his liver. I don't recall now whether it's liver or kidney, but anyway, they took away half of it. <laughs> and very nearly disqualified him from graduating and being commissioned as a second lieutenant. However, he readily passed the special examination that determined if he had kept up in academics with the rest of his class and whether he was still physically fit to survive the rigors of rugged military life. FBR passed these exams without difficulty and graduated standing number 66 in a class of 669. Had he not been hospitalized, he would have had a higher standing. Immediately after graduation from West Point, FBR went on to earn a master's degree in civil engineering at the University of Illinois. On his return to Manila, he took and passed the board exams for civil engineers. He was the only president of the Philippines who was also a registered civil engineer. In 1951, less than two years after his graduation from West Point, FBR left with the Philippines for Korea with the 10th Battalion Combat Team, PEFTOK, that's Philippine Expeditionary Forces to Korea, for duty with the UN Command Forces Darat. It will be recalled that the Philippines was the first of only two Asian countries. The other one was Thailand, but they came later. We came ahead. Who responded to the call of the UN Security Council for combat troops of members to assist the Republic of South Korea in resisting the invasion of the North Korean and the Chinese communists. While in Korea, FBR distinguished himself in the 10th VCT when he led his platoons in capturing the heavily defended communist occupied Hill Iri, a strategic position near Churwon, North Korea, without any loss of his life without any loss of life among the Filipino soldiers. FBR was awarded the Military Mer Merit Medal with spearhead for this heroic action. FBR was promoted to captain four years after he graduated. Normally, such promotion is attained only after seven years of commissioned service. During my 28 years, of military service with the Army, I never was assigned to a unit where I had to work with, with FBR. Well, for one thing, while he started with the Army, he, made, he moved to Philippine Constabulary and later Philippine National Police. It was only in 1993, during his second year as president, when he asked me to be the Secretary of Public Works that I worked with him for eight years. Don't worry, there were 35 pages of this, but my wife held back 20, so I still have 12. Now, since I was very strongly against working in that position, 
I prepared what I felt would be an ironclad list of alibis against the appointment, just in case the president would ask me to take the job. Sure enough, early in June of that year, the president asked me to see him, quote, at your earliest convenience. That means within an hour or so. <laughs> when I reported to him, without any preliminaries, he asked me to accept the job of Secretary of Public Works and Highways. But I was ready with my list of alibis. But for every reason he had for me to accept the position, I had a ready response for refusing it. When I said that I was too old for the job, I was 65 then, he immediately shut this down by saying, look, I am five months older than you are. I have only half a liver. You have a whole liver. So what's your next excuse? After about an hour of discussion, during which I felt that FBR was growing impatient, although he never showed if he was impatient, he said, Greg, this discussion is getting us nowhere. Let me just explain the situation I am in now. And he said, I have many problems. I need your help. Will you help me or not? This was a standard FBR approach, very few words, short and simple, and straight to the point. I realized that FBR was now falling back on a time-honored military tradition that when an officer asks another officer for help, the latter is obligated to respond positively. By the time I had run out of alibis, I could only say, Mr. President, when we were cadets in 1949, you were my upperclassmen and you were hazing me. Now, 44 years later, you are still hazing me. <laughs> he just smiled dryly and said, can you start work tomorrow? <laughs> Certainly this was more a command than a question. I had to capitulate. But this marked the start of eight years of the most hectic period in my life. Three days after I assumed the responsibility for DPWH's operations, I was in a helicopter flying a rec reconnaissance for possible alternative routes in the event that Mount Pinatubo's asphalt would close all existing roads in central Luzon. While we were flying, over Santa Rosa, Nueva Ecija, our hel helicopter caught fire. We made an emergency landing on a newly harvested and very muddy field, some two kilometers from the highway. On hitting the ground, we instantly bailed out of the helicopter and ran as far away from it as the mud allowed us. The helicopter exploded when we were about 50 meters away and completely burnt down. We walked to the highway and hitched a ride with then Nueva Ecija Congressman Fajardo, who was on his way to Manila. He told us that they saw our helicopter up in the air burning furiously, and they thought that it would explode at any moment. We reached Malolos barely in time for my scheduled first meeting with the DPWH Central Luzon Region staff that morning. Immediately, a constabulary trooper came to inform me that for an hour or so, the president had been repeatedly asking me to contact him. When I was able to contact him, he told me to call my wife immediately and assured and assure her that I was safe. And he said that because the radio stations had been broadcasting over the past hour that the helicopter carrying the DPWH secretary and three owners had caught fire and crashed without any survivors. He said that I call my wife as soon as possible before she gets a heart attack. 
I was able to reach my wife by telephone. She said she was not listening to the radio that morning, but that some of our friends had called and asked where I was that morning. Unexplainably, they all abruptly hung up when she told them that I was flying somewhere over Central Zone. They must have heard the radio broadcasts by then and did not want to be the one to break the bad news to my wife that our helicopter had supposedly crashed. FBR waited until I had talked with my wife to ask details about what actually happened. I informed him that our helicopter caught fire, had an emergency landing, and completely burned, although we had a safe landing. FBR asked what I meant by safe landing. I answered that aircraft pilots consider a landing safe if all passengers were able to walk away unassisted from the aircraft. I'm not sure whether FBR was amused by this or not. He just instructed me, arrange with the insurers to get a new helicopter and get back to work. This was a facet of the Philippines' deep concern not only for the well-being of the people working with him, but also for the members of their families. I remember the countless times when he broke off from his busy schedule to visit wounded soldiers, visit sick dependents of the people who worked with him, attend wakes, and so on and so forth. FBI had a penchant for going out to inspect ongoing projects on the eve of a holiday and even during the holiday itself. The word workaholic does not do him justice. He was truly a machine in perpetual motion. He never seemed to sleep. He went to bed later than all and would wake up earlier than most of the rest of us. When a serious problem occurred and the people working on it would have irreconcilable positions, FBR would pull back from the discussion and say, I have something more important to do, but I'll be back shortly. Continue working in this and come up with a win-win solution before I return. By this he meant that everybody goes back to the discussion table and arrive at a workable solution in a way that everybody leaves the discussion table with a feeling that even if one's propositions are not accepted, the proponent has been given ample opportunity to explain his position and has been given a fair hearing. Win-win is his in, uh, invention and he has a patent for it, so it has never applied to anyone I know. While I cannot say that we enjoyed the work he gave us, he made us feel that we are being given the opportunity to help the country move forward, and that he was always ready to use his presidential clout to assist the frontliners in overcoming their difficulties. FBR unquestionably accomplished many things. I have time for only a few of these. The succeeding speakers, I am sure, will take care of the rest. Among the accomplishments that stood out during his administration were, first, he broke up PLDT's monopoly in tele telecommunications and opened up licensing to many other players. He hastened the era of cell phones, and for the first time, family members and friends truly felt the, conven the, conven con the conven convenience of being just a phone, phone call or text message away. Next, he put an end to the energy crisis. He invoked emergency powers and opened up the field to independent power producers so that additional power plants could be constructed expeditiously. Third, he ended government monopoly of the skies and opened up aviation to new players. He encouraged the entry of more 
international airlines. The resulting competition among the player, uh, uh, many more players drove air, uh, airplane ticket prices down. He increased tax collection to 17% of gross do domestic product, a record yet to be surpassed, with the country experiencing four years of budgetary surplus. While the layman may not fully understand the effects and of taming budget def deficits, it simply meant lesser reliance on foreign borrowing, lower costs of funds for businessmen, which ultimately resulted in lower prices for the common man. The humanity of F FBR stands out among the accomplishments. He loved the ordinary people, especially the vulnerable. He was not the kissing or Ayuda type, but he gave people the dignity they deserved by involving them in the discussion-making processes. <coughs> Excuse me. Cabinet meetings were held in rural areas where he listened to the concerns and suggest suggestions of community members. He demonstrated how important it is to empower citizens and gave them many opportunities to attain their pot potential and making them believe that change was indeed within their reach. Steady Eddie brought the country out of the doldrums. He could have done much more, but he was a firm believer in the Constitution despite its limitations. While FBR seldom talked about duty, honor, country, he lived his entire life by these tenets. Now FBR has left us, but considering what he had accomplished, I am reminded of the words of the final stanza of the West Point Alma Mater song, which says, and I quote, and when our work is done, our course on earth is run. May it be said, well done, be thou at peace. And so, as FBR rides into the sunset to the waiting arms of the Eternal Father, we sincerely state to him, Steady Eddie, well done. We salute you. Be thou at peace. Thank you. Before we play the West Point Alma Mater song, we would like to acknowledge Mr. Fred Mison, our current president of the West Point Society. Mr. Mison. We also have with us tonight Colonel Eldridge Singleton, also a West Point graduate, currently with the U.S. Embassy. Ladies and gentlemen, they would like to share with us the West Point Alma Mater song. Present and their spouses, if they feel like doing so, to come in here and sing.
our next speaker was the former National Security Advisor, General Jose Joal Almonte. <laughs> With uh, your permission, I would like to speak uh, from the heart. For us who are here and those not here, those who love and respect President Ramos, let me say that we have so much to be proud of. Our nation, has conferred on him the highest accolade that would be given to a deserving son. Let me mention some of these elements that belong to that nation, meaning our nation. The opinion makers, columnists, uh, investigative uh, journalists, reporters, and etc. You have the political establishment from the highest to the lowest, those elected and not yet elected, people in the academy and religious institutions, uh, workers' organization. civic groups too long for me to mention. Let me just say that uh, before I, I go to another uh, topic, that uh, the uh, group very close to President Ramos, the Filipinos, everyday Filipinos, uh, all of us, all of these are one in saying that President Ramos uh, has been the best president of this republic. As a military officer, he was to them number one. As a police general, he was number one. He was the best uh, president of this republic. He is the savior of the nation. He is uh, the trustee of the nation. And one of our mainstream papers, one day, just day after he passed away, came out with a screaming headline saying that in bold letters, Fidel B. Ramos, 94, which is his age, the stabilizer in chief. May I say that if you put all of this together, it would appear to us, or to me particularly, that uh, he is the number one goat of the nation. What I mean is the popular meaning of goat, because in West Point and other academies, goat means uh, a slow learner, is that correct? Dull uh, student, the bottom of the class. But the goat I am referring to means the greatest of all time. That was President Ramos. But let me say that there is something sorely missing in this. And let me explain. Dr. Jose Rizal, Andres Bonifacio, and his special friend, I'm referring to General Aguinaldo, 
General Luna, who was martyred by the soldiers of General Aguinaldo, and others who fought and gave their lives to a movement where necessary, particularly to bring about the birth of a new nation, the birth of a new sovereign nation, which we now call the Republic of the Philippines. All right. Nearly 100, 100 years later, in the 1986 People Power Revolution, one day, early morning, President, late President Marcos and his family, and together with some aides, left the country for exile in Hawaii. And he left behind uh, a vacuum in terms of the national leadership. Immediately, a boy said that Cory Aquino should be the president in place of President Ramos. She was the leader of the opposition. She was one of the three pillars of that revolution. But most important, he was loved and respected by the people and could always do no wrong. But there was another voice which says that the leader that should take over must be secretary and really General Ramos or either any one of them. Because they were the ones who helped the people overcome the forces raid against them. At this point, General Ramos said, I do not want to be a part of a decision or action that will make this nation a banana republic ruled by the barrel of the gun and cause the dissolution of the republic. So please take note of that point because this is the, the theme of what I want to share with you. All right, to make a long story short, President Corey became the president, but during uh, her incumbency, there were nine coup attempts launched against her government. During the most critical period at that time, The people, some people who are, were members of the Cory cabinet, and uh, I know very close to her, came to Ramos asking him to take over the government because Cory could no longer govern and not even protect herself. President Ramos response was immediate. I don't want to preside over the dissolution of the Republic. If there is anybody in the military or police or the civilian government who would like to be a president, let them resign or retire, whichever it may be and then submit themselves to election, and if they win, to be the leader of the nation. And additionally, he told uh, these people, tell your friends that I will, as Secretary of Defense, I will defend the government of Cory Aquino and ensure that his personal safety is in place. 
All right. If you take these two decisions of President Ramos of not accepting the offer of uh, taking over as the highest official of the Republic because he would like to ensure that the efforts of the earlier uh, heroes who brought about this republic, he wanted to be sure that uh, uh, this is protected. Now, if you look at these two side by side, you will note, as I said earlier, that our older heroes brought about the life of the Republic of the Philippines. Whereas President Ramos defended the life of that republic. If you look at the impact of these two situations side by side, you could see that there is no difference in terms of significance. What I'm trying to say is this. If those who brought about the Republic of the Philippines, the birth of the Republic of the Philippines, we declared as national heroes and celebrate their birthdays and death anniversaries, etc. I would like to submit to our nation, to everybody, that President Ramos deserved as much. All right. I think I have spoken too much. Okay. Uh, I am submitting this for the reflection of our leaders, for their consideration. And uh, perhaps it will need more time. But this is a case which is not as hard as rocket science. If we would like to give to what is due to someone, I think three days is too long to prepare a proclamation that President Ramos is, na is a national hero of this nation. I hope you agree. <laughs> you know, I would like to conclude by sharing the wisdom of some wise men who told me that a nation who has no capacity to identify the heroes, number one, and number two, does not have the courage to honor that hero, will weaken the soul of that nation. It's, it is doomed not to succeed, maybe not also to fail, but not the destiny that we deserve. So, my friends, salamat po. Tapos na ang aking speech. May we now request General Jose Magno to introduce our next speaker.
thank very much, Joe. That was a very informative and revealing story about our boss. At one o'clock this afternoon, we paid tribute to our founder of the Special Forces, Airborne. We brought 14 generals in full retired t-shirts. Then we started with uh, our early days because as President Ramos has always said, even as president, the most during dangerous career that I ever had was with the Special Forces Airborne. This morning, we talked about securing and leading all the activities, which was the sources of the legacy of the country. But that was only one half because he only served with us until we were together with uh, General Monti in Vietnam. That was only half. But the second half, he really served with them because he organized the Special Action Force, which was a guardian angel when he was chief of staff, and especially as president. That is the second half of the story of President Ramos, General Ramos, or the steady Eddy, as you consider him. Today, this is an intermission because we have always known General Ramos as a Pangasinense or a Pangalatot. He hails from Asingan, Pangasinan. And in this building now, this room, we have two other generals. We have Ray Velasco from Santa Barbara and we have Frankie Bravo from San Nicolas and this is Joe Magno from Pusurubio. When the people from Pangasinan heard about the, the, the departure of our great leader, there was a delegation that volunteered to attend the last rites of the president. My job is to introduce this delegation who traveled 230 kilometers away this afternoon, take some pictures, meet some of you, and then return to the province of Pangasinan. Heading the delegation is the provincial governor of Pangasinan, Honorable Ramon Giko III. He has his son, who is also the congressman of the district of Pangasinan. The fourth, the third member of the delegation is a very good friend of President Ramos as president because he was not only coming from Bayambang, but he was also the behind the scenes for Stradcom, for Skyway, of which we were together. So without much ado, may I request the provincial governor, Ramon Gico III, we can move forward to welcome in and say a few words. Please. Mm -hmm. 
ba 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 Thank you very much, uh, Major General Jose Magno and uh, the delegation from Pangasinan. Also, thanks you for uh, facilitating uh, the delegation to have a schedule uh, and to mourn with the family of the late President uh, FBR. Um, we lost a great leader in Pangasinan. When uh, President uh, Fidel V. Ramos was elected to office. I was just about to graduate high school. And when he, when he finished his term, I was uh, about to graduate college. So young as I was before, things that I heard about his platform, making the country a rising tiger, and uh, we felt a great improvement of our economy, and if it were not for his economic reforms, the country may not have survived the 1997 Asian currency crisis. In Pangasinan, he brought in so many reforms, infrastructure projects, many of which are in uh, the 6th district of uh, Pangasinan. He brought in major investments, like at that time, Hopewell Holding, Holdings uh, established the, one of the power plants in the province, and as well as the San Roque Dam. He was uh, the one who built the Narciso Ramos Sports Complex in Lingayen, which is a part of the capital complex. And during his term, the first Palarong Pambansa uh, was held, uh, I mean, the first, it's the first time that uh, the Palarong Pangbansa was held in the province of Pangasinan. So with that, uh, we are saddened that uh, we lost a great son of the province and a great leader. Thus, uh, the whole delegation to include my family, my wife, and uh, my father, Congressman uh, Ramon Monching Giko Jr., who is one of the original LACAS members. And uh, also former Mayor Cesar Kiambao and Mrs. Nina Kiambao. And many of our uh, officials and uh, capital employees and uh, barangay officials, particularly from the uh, municipality of Bayambang, are all here with us um, to express also our, our grief that we have lost uh, a great son of the province. I'm also tasked by the Sangguniang Bayan, Sangguniang Panlalawigan of Pangasinan, to give this uh, resolution to the family of uh, the late, the late uh, President Fidel V. Ramos, Provincial Resolution Number 663 uh, 2022 and uh, which its title uh, reads expressing the deepest sense of grief sympathy and condolence of the people of Pangasinan over the passing of His Excellency Fidel V. Ramos the 12th President of the Republic of the Philippines Signed by all members of the Sangguniang Panlalawigan, Vice Governor Mark de Guzman Lambino, and yours truly, Governor Ramon B. Gico III.
aray ay kabaluyan ko. Maraming um, isa salamat kami at pandiyod sayan. Pagkakas uh, ay kabaluyan Ray, please join us. May, may we request the delegation from Pangasinan to please come forward for a photo opportunity?
Uh, let us resume our program. May we call on the current administrator of the Fe Philippine Veterans Administration Office, Lieutenant General Ernesto Carolina. Magandang gabi po sa ating lahat. On behalf of uh, the Filipino veterans uh, community, I wish to uh, convey our uh, sincerest and uh, deepest uh, condolences to uh, Mrs. Amelita Ming Ramos, the rest of her family, her children, and uh, grandchildren. As uh, the immediate past administrator of the Philippine Veterans Affairs Office for, uh, for 12 years, we have worked very closely with the uh, former president. And uh, I'm therefore uh, greatly honored and privileged to uh, pay tribute to our uh, 12th president of the Republic, President uh, Fidel Valdez Ramos, and uh, to speak about him as a Filipino veteran. FBR, as he is fondly known to us, is the son of a uh, notable World War II veteran, former ambassador and uh, Secretary of Foreign Affairs, Narciso Aramos. During the dark days of uh, the Japanese occupation, he opted to risk his life by uh, joining the Filipino resistance uh, fighters rather than collaborate with the enemy. No wonder. Then that uh, the young FBR was predisposed to join the profession of arms as the blood of a veteran flowed in his veins. After uh, graduating from uh, the U.S. Military Academy at uh, West Point in uh, 1950, FBR was assigned to the 10th, 28th Battalion Combat Team, or BCT, which was among the five BCTs uh, deployed in Korea when the Korean War uh, erupted in the same year. He was one of uh, the 7,420 strong Philippine Expeditionary Force to Korea, or PEFTO, sent by the Philippines to help the embattled South Korea against the invading North Korean and Communist uh, Chinese uh, forces. This was mentioned earlier by uh, another Korean veteran who, uh, who uh, spoke. Uh, Secretary uh, Vihilar. And uh, the third major victory achieved by our uh, pep talkers in Korea, the Battle of uh, Iri Hill, is uh, covered in one whole chapter in this book, The Filipinos in the Korean War. And it tells about uh, that uh, very dangerous uh, mission and uh, if, you, if you wish to see the details of uh, that battle, we have a uh, Korean War Memorial right across along Bayani Road at the Philippine-Korea Friendship Center where we have a pep talk memorial library and uh, museum. But let me just uh, give you an overview of uh, this uh, battle of, uh, of Erie Hill. On the 21st of May, 1952, Colonel Salvador Absede, the uh, 
battalion commander of the 28th BCT, directed uh, then Major uh, Felizardo Tanabe. So uh, these are very familiar name with, uh, with you, sir. The 28th Battalion Commander uh, Operations Officer to prepare for the final assault to capture the strategic Erie Hill occupied by Communist Chinese forces. It was a very risky mission because uh, Erie Hill was in a vantage position. And uh, in the account of Villa Santa, the uh, war correspondent, uh, the, uh, the, the, the fighting, the nature of the fighting there uh, was uh, close quarter uh, and hand to hand combat. But uh, the then young Second Lieutenant Ramos was tasked to lead the 44 man Second Reconnaissance Platoon in the final attack on the hill, Erie in what would turn out to be the most famous exploit in the Korean War. It was a successful uh, operation. The 28th had accomplished its uh, mission, stoutly defending and recapturing lost ground against much larger Red Forces. The Chinese suffered 27 uh, men killed and at least 10 wounded. The three officers and 41 enlisted men of the Filipino platoon that assaulted Hill Erie returned without a single casualty. The young Second Lieutenant Ramos had acquitted himself well in his baptism of fire as a platoon leader. Fourteen years after, his combat duty in the uh, Korean War, then Major Fidel V. Ramos found himself in another battleground in Vietnam. I, I, I see some uh, Vietnam War veterans here, uh, General Magno, General uh, Almonte, and I think there are others in the crowd. But unlike the uh, Korean War, his mission to uh, war-torn uh, Vietnam in uh, 1966 was not as a combatant but as a member of the first Philippine Civic Action Group or PILCAG whose mission was to help promote the welfare of the Vietnamese particularly the poor village people living in far-flung areas through civic action or community development and people empowerment. Uh, again, one whole chapter uh, covers the story of the Filipinos in the Vietnam War in a book written by uh, Ben Cal, Warriors for Peace. I recall the uh, PFBR uh, attended the, uh, the, uh, the book launching of this uh, beautiful book. His training in unconventional warfare and psychological warfare operations had greatly helped in uh, carrying out his job as a volunteer of the first PILCAG deployed in Vietnam. Major Ramos was the first commander of the Special Forces Company Airborne of the Philippine Army. His Vietnam assignment was a new challenge in his military career as a Psy War expert to win the hearts and minds of the Vietnamese sans combat but through civic action in a hostile environment. He knew the risks, but nevertheless, he volunteered in the war-torn country to help fulfill the commitment of the Philippines to support a neighboring nation in distress because of communist aggression. The PILCAC's mission in Vietnam was to build and not to destroy, to bring happiness, not sorrow, and to foster goodwill, not hatred. Thus, the first PILCAG hit the ground running when it arrived in Tainin province. The Filipinos started constructing roads, bridges, schoolhouses, and conducted medical and dental mission in the villages, despite the fact that these areas were creeping with Viet Cong. 
in uh, some sentimental uh, missions uh, made by uh, uh, Vietnam War veterans, uh, they uh, related that some of these structures built by our uh, Vietnam War uh, veterans are still there, especially in the rural areas. His significant contributions to these foreign wars earned him the Korean and Vietnam Service Medals, among others. The following year saw the steady rise of FBR up to the top of the military uh, hierarchy and became chief of staff of the armed forces of the Philippines. His sterling military career is already part of the glorious history of the armed forces of the Filipino people, two volumes of which were uh, written by a respected uh, historian, Dr. Cesar Pobre. Fast forward, FBR's post-military service was marked by his persistent advocacy for the welfare and benefits of the Filipino veterans, making him a household name within the Filipino veterans community. When he was Secretary of National Defense, FBR co-founded the Filipino War Veterans Foundation Incorporated or Philvets. I see uh, Bertlina here, who is a member of the board of uh, Philvets. In, uh, this was founded in 1989. I recall in uh, one of the uh, board meet meetings of Philvets prior to the pandemic, General De Villa, who is a member of the board, uh, uh, told us, dalawa na lang kaming buhay ni FBR among the co-founders. So now, isa na lang siya. As uh, Phil Vett's uh, founding uh, chairman, FBR envisioned the organization to play a significant role in uh, ensuring that war veterans are afforded the privilege to a dignified and decent life. Phil Vett's now an established institution, organized 15. Uh, by the way, Ray Velasco yeah, is also uh, a member of the board. I think he's the president. They organized medical outreach uh, clinics across the nation to provide a steady and convenient way of uh, delivering medical uh, assistance to our veterans and their spouses, particularly those who are in the far-flung areas who cannot uh, conveniently uh, go to the, BM, the uh, Veterans uh, Memorial Medical Center. Philbets also established the Philbets Skills Training Center in uh, 1997 to provide for the technical vocational training of veterans and their dependents in order to uh, give them a better chance of finding decent jobs that will help uplift their economic condition. Field vets and other veterans organizations, especially uh, the PEFTOC Veterans uh, Association, would often hold fundraising events. Uh, Mel would uh, invariably be there, such as golf tournaments, where FBR was a constant presence. By holding these events, needed funds were raised to support the medical, healthcare, and technical vocational training programs of the foundation, as well as other welfare programs for the veterans, both World War II and post-World War II, and their dependents. During these events, FBR would be seen merrily socializing with other uh, senior uh, veterans, playing golf and sharing their uh, experiences with uh, one another. He would then donate one month's worth of his PIVAO pension to the fundraising an unwritten pledge of loyalty to his fellow veterans. Uh, General Magno uh, uh, was present in many of this fundraising and uh, I just would like to share uh, that made the, uh, this fundraising uh, very lively. Kasi si FBR, ano yan eh? Doon sa, sa TOF, di ba? 
Kunyari, di niya tatamaan. Uh, ganun. Eh. Pagkatapos, uh, doon lang pala niya dadalhin doon sa malalapit. Oh, yung mga, <laughs> tontuwa yung mga tao. Yeah. And uh, he would share a lot of his stories. During his six-year uh, administration as the president, he worked to provide assistance and pay tribute to fellow veterans by approving and signing several laws that would uh, alleviate the plight of the Filipino veterans. I'd like to cite a few of these uh, very, uh, uh, to cite the significant ones. One is uh, Republic Act 7696, which amended the uh, Republic Act 6948, standardizing and upgrading the benefits for military veterans and their dependents. It was, uh, it is in this law that uh, the uh, disability pension fund was, uh, was increased. Republic Act number 787, an act granting permanent resident status, other rights and privileges to Filipino veterans of World War II who acquired American citizenship. Kasi after, uh, after the Second uh, World War, hindi naman binigyan ng pension yung mga Pilipino. It, there was a recession act. So as a sweetener, sabi ng Amerikano, mag-American citizen na lang kayo. Naiwan naman yung asawa nila, mga anak dito. And uh, during the time of every, he passed uh, this law to, you know, allow the unification of these families. Uh, it was also during his term when Republic Act number uh, 7917 was passed, amending Section 8 of Republic Act 7227, the Basis Conversion and Development Act of 1992 which allocated 2% of the proceeds from any sale of portions of military camps in Metro Manila to finance benefits or claims of military war veterans and their dependents. So after this time, PIVA gets 2% of, uh, of what they collect, the BCDA uh, collects. Also, uh, during his time, Republic Act 8440, also known as an act, providing for the confirmation of World War II military services, which created a military service board. Because after uh, World War II, there uh, were so many unrecognized guerrillas. They fought, but uh, they were not able to enlist. And so this military service board was created to, to review, examine the records, and determine the eligibility for uh, uh, pension of these uh, recognized guerrillas. Inabot ko pa yon. There were uh, uh, more than 2,000 uh, beneficiaries of this military service board who were recognized and we were able to pay their, uh, their arrears, their pension arrears. And uh, Republic Act 8221 that provided for the establishment of the Kapas National Shrine where we annually observed the Pagbunita sa Kapas during Philippine Veterans Week. In fact, in the last uh, four years prior to the pandemic, every year it became a ritual. Pumupunta kami doon nila General Magno, nila Mel, and many other veterans uh, to reenact the death march. Yeah, uh, yeah I think uh, Christy was, uh, and sometimes dala niya yung uh, apo niya. And uh, we would uh, walk from uh, the People's Park in Kapas up to the uh, Kapas Rhine. That's about more than 10 kilometers. And uh, parang re-enactment. And then it evolved, naging ano na siya, uh, run for a better run. In other words, you pick your uh, favorite better run and then you dedicate. Yeah, and you pay something. And then he said, uh, dapat dali na mga bata rito. LGU, etc. Lumaki na lumaki. And then uh, finally, he uh, designated Mina Gabor, di ba sir? Mina Gabor, uh, his former uh, tourism secretary, to take charge of organizing. So, nagkaroon, pinopromote pa yun before the ano. And pati mga Amerikano sumasali, it became a very large, uh, a very big uh, annual activity as part of Veterans Week. But the pandemic, uh, you know, stopped it. So, I hope uh, it can be... Uh, it was also FBR who uh, issued proclamation number 653 in October uh, 1995, directing the local government units uh, concerned to commemorate annually 
the anniversaries of significant events related to the liberation of the Philippines during the Second World War. Kasi nung panahon na yun, ano eh, limbawa, Battle of Besang Pass, pagkatawagan mo, eh, that is a very significant part of, uh, of World War II. Pag tinanong mo, anong plano ninyo, Mayor, uh, sa Besang Pass? Eh, kung kayo magpapakain, kayong ano, isi-celebrate namin. <laughs> so, but because of this uh, proclamation, you know, we use it uh, and became a benchmark no? in making sure that these significant events uh, cited in the pr proclamation uh, would be uh, celebrated. And we benchmark namin ngayon out of the 43, 38 are uh, already being uh, celebrated uh, without prodding the, uh, the mayor or the, the governor, and then they provide uh, a budget for it. So, pupunta doon yung mga veterano natin. And uh, the, 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 this uh, proclamation invoked that uh, the listed World War II events should be continuously observed to honor our war veterans as well as to instill in the people's hearts and minds the desire to preserve our freedom and our way of life. FBR had always been very active in promoting the activities during the yearly observance of Veterans Week. Misa sumasama pa siya doon sa uh, trip to Corregidor. Dala niya apo niya. And uh, doon sa Kapas, pag dala niya apo niya, dilibutin nila yung uh, Wall of Heroes because there's a Wall of Heroes there where uh, the names of those who endured the death march sa uh, RH. Ang dami niya tinuturo ito. Ito. Mga kamag-anak niya. So maraming mga World War II Veterans na nag-death march na kamag-anak ni ABR. And he usually joined the project uh, launching activities. He joined the promotions. Minsan, siya pa yung ano, mag-organize ng uh, media uh, to uh, drumbeat the uh, Veterans Week. Libre kape, libre pandesal sa kamuning kafe. <laughs> Especially the book launching events. Ayan, hindi yung ma-absent sa book uh, launching effect. Uh, book launching. Libro niya or uh, books written by, uh, by P. Vau you know, to complete the narrative of uh, World War II. And he would gladly oblige to be the guest of honor and speaker in these events. ABR's comrades in the Philippine Expeditionary Force to Korea or PEPTOC, Veterans Association Incorporated, the Vietnam War Veterans Association, and the rest of the Filipino veterans community will remember FBR as a patriot, a hero, an enabling and caring leader, a soldier statesman, and a true friend. His absence will uh, be surely and deeply felt within the veterans community. President Fidel V. Ramos, sir, Thank you very much for your love and genuine malasakit for our veterans. Thank you for the quality time you have spent with us, the fun, the good company, and the many valuable lessons you have imparted. Thank you, sir, for your selfless service to our country and people. We surely miss you, sir. But we rejoice in the thought that you now enjoy your well-deserved rest in eternal peace with the Lord Almighty. From the veterans community, sir, so long our snappy salute. Salamat po. Thank you, General Carolina. At this point in our program, the Philippine National Police Special Action Force would like to offer their tribute to the father of the PNP SAF.
So may we call on the first commanding officer of the PNP staff, also the former mayor of Santa Barbara, Pangasinan, and chairman of the Metropolitan Waterworks and Sewerage System, Lieutenant General Reynaldo Velasco. Maraming salamat. Uh, the other day I was told to speak for the Negro of our uh, beloved president. So I was initially tempted to talk about 48 years of partnership because when I retired I thought that was the end of my service to FBR. But in, even after retirement, I had even more orders from him. But yesterday, I was told that I will only talk about SAP. So that uh, Mel, uh, excuse me for the very long uh, speech that you prepared. I just cut it a little short, shorter than Secretary Baylar. We are gathered here tonight to pay homage to General Peter Valdez Ramos, the 12th President of the Republic of the Philippines. We grieve with the Ramos family for his irreplaceable loss, the irreplaceable loss of a husband, a father, an uncle, and grandfather. We too feel the loss for he had touched our lives as our leader and mentor. As evangelist Billy Graham once said, no matter how prepared you think you are for the death of a loved one, he still comes as a shock and it still hurts very deeply, unquote. Jeramos was not only a soldier, he was also a politician, a statesman, a nation builder, a sportsman, and a peacemaker. Indeed, he was a man of all season. His accomplishments were recorded in the annals of the country's history. He is among our heroes. I had the honor and privilege of having worked closely with Jar Ramos starting in 1974 when I served him as his edicamp. I was surprised why I was assigned at headquarters as Iricamp. While it's true, I was from Pangasinan. I have never worked with him before. My only close association with him was that uh, every time he visits Mindanao, we played pilota with him. And the instruction of my song commander was always uh, Ray, the, pre the, uh, the chief PMP is coming, he's going to play. Pelota, make sure he wins, but make it difficult for him to win. So, anong ibig sabihin niyan? Ako, sabi ko noon, tinyente ako, asay na ako sa Mindanao, wala nang mas malayong assignment. Kaysa Mindanao noon, sabi ko, kahit na bunggo-bunggoin ko ito siguro, hindi na ako may assign sa mas malayo pa kaysa Mindanao. Not knowing na ang punishment ko pala ay malapit sa kanyang opisina. Kaya ako ginawa ang edicamp. Ang senior edicamp ko noon kasi is uh, Kati Katigbak, uh, one of his favorite edicamp. Unang araw ko pa lang, walang orientation, pinag-duty ako kaagad. Pagbaba namin sa lobby, binuksan ko yung kanyang pinto ng kotse, nabuljak na ako kaagad. Sabi niya sa akin, hindi mo trabaho yan. Bata pa ako, kaya ko pong buksan yung kotse ng, aki, ng uh, sakyan natin. Sabi ko, akala ko, eh di ka glamorize ano. Siga ka dito sa krami, yung pala, favorite punching bag ka ng ating uh, HPMP. Kaya nung nag dito si Secretary Bilar, na palagi siyang hinihihis nung uh, playbo siya. 
siya, ano lang eh, isang taon lang eh. Ako, 24 years eh. And even beyond, because even when I was already retired, andyan pa rin siya. After more than two years, he sent me for a foreign schooling to take up military police advance course at Fort McClellan, Alabama. Diyan naman ang masarap kay boss. Pag nagsawa na sa iyo sa kabubulaut niya, dadaling ka, bibigyan ka ng reward. And I, I was rewarded the privilege of going to an advanced course in Fort McClellan, Alabama to take my advanced course. Upon my return from schooling from USA, he issued a policy that all graduates from foreign schooling, starting with Belasco, should automatically serve with the Philippine Constabulary Command to improve the faculty members of the school. Kaya pagdating ko naman sa training command, lahat ng graduates at foreign schooling after me, griping sa akin. Kasi kung hindi ako aalis, hindi rin sila makakaalis sa training command, which at that time was considered a difficult for punishment assignment. Pero masarap doon sa training command nung araw. Medyo maganda lang kasi after six months, Jerry De Villa called me at the office of the Chief PMP and offered me to become company commander of Bacolod, 31st PC Company. So sabi ko, Sir, bakit mo ako pinili? Eh may uto si boss, dalawang taon daw ako sa training command. Sabi niya sa akin, uh, hindi, naklir na kita, sabi niya. Ano naman ang qualification ko para ako yung maging company commander ng Bacolod? Eh sabi niya, bata ka ni Biyari, eh. siguro pwede ka. So that started yung karir ko na pagbata ka pala ni Tabaco, kahit anong position, pwede ka. Ayan, andyan lahat yung mga subtroopers dyan na pwede kayo. Pangitingiti si Balong, kasi ikaw din Balong. Ha? Kawawa ka rin kahit na nandun ka sa Office of the President. Of course, uh, when you are assigned to that unit, he expects you to do good. And I was proud that uh, during my stint as company commander in Negros, he used to visit me and ask me, kanong kailangan, kumusta ka na, paano ka? Kaya, pero yun ang, yun ang kanyang ano man, na way of, ano na, you better do good. And you should not fail me. And uh, I did not fail him. As company commander in 1978, he was very proud that we were the best company nationwide with him and President Marcos giving the award to our company. This relationship with Jerry Ramos and Jerry Villa earned for me the appointment as the first battalion commander of the PMP Special Action Force, which later on found a Tagalog version of Sariling Army ni Pidel. Oh, ano nyo? Ano Tagalog version ng SAP? Sariling Army ni Fidel. Bakit? When we started that one, actually when he called me, sabi niya sa akin, Ray, I gave you the boys, meaning Rason, Sunny Rason, uh, Sindong Perer, Boeing Alarcio, and the rest of the boys. Five names to choose from. Tinanong ko sinong gusto ng commander, and they choose you. Kaya nagu naging sariling army ni Fidel kasi karamihan noon I was the company I was the battalion commander former AD camp my ex owa Sani Ramos former AD camp my intelligence officer was uh, Sendong Perer who was also a former AD camp but I think naging profound yung pagka bansag ng SAP na sariling army ni Fidel because of the role that the PC SAP during the AIDS, uh, 86 revolution, when we secured Camp Krame, which was the command center of both General Ramos and Secretary Enrile. And even beyond, after AIDS, 86, General Ramos was surrounded by sub troopers, not only for the security, his security, but even in critical positions of responsibility. I can recall that uh, Balong started, I think, as executive assistant when he was still chief of staff. Then he became executive assistant when he was ECND until he was so good, that's why he was 
again retained as executive assistant at the office of the president. Mabuti lang kasi kung ako ay may problema, mayroon akong tinatawagan. Pero hindi naman lahat sinusob ni Balong eh. Kasi one time when I was assigned to arm, sabi ko Balong, sabi mo naman kay boss, bakit ako arm? Parang pakain sa buhay ito eh. Eh nung ako'y kinuha niyang edicamp, I was slated to become company commander of the BAW or for three first. Baka naman pwedeng RD para from CORD ng Region 11. After two days, tawag si Balong, Sir, doon ka daw talaga. Kailangan ka doon sa Region Arm. Pero alam ko may mission yun. That's why I'm proud that uh, during my time as regional commander of Region Arm, the longest road in the history of the world was finally completed. Would you ever know what is the longest road in the history of the world? Not in terms of kilometers, but in terms of how long it took us to complete that road. The Cotabato Marawi Road was completed in three and a half centuries. And that was completed during the time of EBR. Sabi ko sa kanya, sir, para matapos ito, lisensyado ka naman engineer, punta ka dito sa Malabang at sabi mo, labas mo yung lisensya mo, I will bore a hole in this road and find out if you are doing it properly. And he did that. That's why, finally, the Narciso Ramos Highway, the longest road in the history of the world, was completed. His confidence and closeness to the PCSAP was developed not only because he was considered founder, but also because he has always joined us many times in our training activities. Sasama sa amin yan, lalakad, madaling araw, lakarin namin yung mga bundok doon sa silang. Ang kanyang uh, reward is nilagang saging, kamote, pandisal, itlog, at kape. Yun na, okay na siya. And he said to it that uh, during our airborne courses, make sure that he joins our graduation jumps. And even all the civic action and combat jumps that we have to do, he is fan of joining us. I can recall one time that uh, we were about, we were refused by DC-130 to jump in Batangas, San Juan, Batangas. But since Secretary General de Villa was there already, sabi niya, mahiya tayo kay Rene, sakay tayo sa helicopter. Pag hindi talaga pwede at malakas ang hangin, huwag tayong tatalon. So true enough, just a group of us, about 14, 14. Sakay kami ang helicopter. Pagdating doon sa San Juan, Batangas, hindi na umikot yung helicopter bumaba yung General Ramos. So sabi ko doon, kinadali, General Isleta, General, Pro, General Florendo, sir, sabi ko, hindi tayo pwedeng hindi tatalon. Kasama ko si Buying noon eh. Alam ko, kasama ko si Buying noon, di ba? Sa tayo ng kalabaw ka nag, ano, kasi ang lakas ng hangin, di mo kayang kontrolin yung, uh, yung inyong uh, parachute. No? Even in retirement, he continued to serve the country and promote the concept of unity in purpose, solidarity in values, and teamwork in nation building for the country to face challenges ahead. He was actually responsible in my appointment as MWSS administrator during the Duterte administration with a specific instruction to make sure that the public-private partnership for Batuer works. That is General Fidel B. Ramos, he takes care of his boys even after retirement. I can proudly say that I am what I am today because of the inspiration and lessons Jan Ramos inculcated in us, his subordinates. For, they, for this, I am forever grateful. Let me end with a quote. Kaya tinan ko asawa ko, baka ganyanin ako eh. Let me end with a quote from an author. 
There are some who bring a light so great to the world that even after they have gone, the light remains uncold. Dear Ramos, sir, your light will forever shine even after our generation. Thank you for sharing your life with us and for your service to the country. Rest in peace, dear Fidel B. Ramos, whom we found called our boss. I salute you, sir. The Special Action Force, also known as Special Action Force, also known as Tagaligtas, is the Philippine National Police Primary Maneuver Unit, created as a highly specialized strike force to win the hearts and the minds of people during the 1980s. Founded by then Armed Forces of the Philippines, Vice Chief of Staff and Philippine Constabulary Chief Lieutenant General Fidel Valdez Ramos on May 16, 1983. SAF's primary task was to battle insurgency and terrorism. Eventually, the unit expanded its role to battle organized crime groups and high-value target criminals. Today, its functions include the conduct of counter-terrorism in urban and rural areas, counter-insurgency operations, hostage rescue, search and rescue operations, civil disturbance management in times of disasters and calamities and other special operations formed along the lines of the british army special air service saf started with about 488 volunteers composed of commissioned officers and enlisted personnel selected from different Philippine Constabulary Units. Following a stringent selection process, out of 120 aspirants, only 44 successfully completed the then SAF Ranger course, which through time evolved as the SAF Commando Course. With the pressing need to ensure peace and order, internal security and political stability of the country, SAF gradually expanded from a battalion-sized unit into a brigade rapid deployment force. In his colorful years in the military service, he was known as a dependable and inspiring officer and a gentleman, leading various innovations in the NPC SAF. When he became president, he again launched several initiatives that propelled our country into greater heights. Despite his successful years as a public servant, President Ramos became popular in his infamous Ed Sajong, also known as Eddie or Tobacco to some. He is also known to be a man of vision. He never goes out of new ideas, ideas that bring innovation to any organization he leads, a quality that he exhibited even when he was elected as the 12th president of the country. Since the unit's founding in 1983, he never ceased to support the Special Action Force, even in his simple ways. This was demonstrated in his visits to the Special Action Force especially during the founding anniversaries of the unit.
a compassionate and a visionary father for all Tagalitas. An eternal inspiration to all who wish to serve the country through selfless service. The founding father of the PNP Special Action Force. A unit some call Sariling Army ni Fidel. are with you and may you rest in peace. You are now in the kingdom of our dear Creator. From the men and women of Special Action Force, may the Force be with you always, sir. May we now request for a few words from our current director, Police Major General Patrick Villacorte. Magandang gabi po sa ating lahat, lalong-lalo na po sa pamilya ng ating pong, uh, Presidente, Fidel B. Ramos. Uh, first of all, we would like to convey our heartfelt sympathy and deepest condolences to the family, relatives and friends of Fidel B. Ramos, our President. We in the Special Action Force are together with you in this time of great loss and sorrow. President Ramos is a seasoned and highly decorated soldier, a general, and a politician. Sir, you are without a doubt an inspiration to all Filipinos. Your integrity and love of country, your astute and decisive personality, and firm belief in democracy have made you a respected figure not only in our country but in the entire world. Sir, you have made enormous contribution to this country and please know that you have the gratitude of our generation and as well as generations to come. You are indeed a father and a national hero to us Filipinos. As everyone may have already know, President Ramos is the founding father of the PNP Special Action Force. And sir, I want to report that your efforts to create a unit that is both formidable and a breed apart from other units were not in vain. Of the humble 149 operatives which composed the first generation of the SAP operators way back in 1983, is now 6,843 strong SAP troopers. We now have 15 battalion stationed all throughout the Philippines. And despite the incremental increase in our strength, we nevertheless maintain the standard and quality of our troops that you have set and envisioned. 
the unit you created has now become the most distinguished and highly recognized unit in the PNP. We have become the MB of other units in the PNP. Special Action Force now is not, is not just admired by our people, but respected and feared by our adversaries as well. We are now a force to reckon with. Sir, your influence and impact in SAP will forever be etched in our history. Rest assured that we will do our part to maintain if not to further raise the standards you, that you have set for the betterment of our country and people. Sir, you may not be with us now, but nevertheless, your legacy and memory will live on in eternity. Sir, rest in the joyfulness of paradise, rest in peace. And my snappiest salute to you, sir. Our next speaker requires no introduction. At the office of the president, he was fondly called the little president. Others would call him Balong. Ladies and gentlemen, Alexander Arevalo. I would like to express the con <clears throat> my condolences to the family of uh, President Fidel Valdez Ramos, presented here by Ted, Christy, and uh, grandchildren uh, Patrick. Si Jelly ba itong isa? When I was asked to speak today for five minutes, Sabi ko, miski pagsalitayin niyo ako ng dalawang araw, kaya ko eh. Uh, I've been touched by the accolades and admi admiration expressed today in print and by speakers today and in the previous days. For tonight, I would like to get personal. Maybe let you get a peek into the life of the ordinary Fidel Ramos when we are around him. I have been practically around him for my whole career, mil military career, and I started as uh, his security officer at the Special Action Force under General, Kern I mean, Lieutenant Colonel, then Ray Velasco. When we were in a convoy from uh, Alabang, to Camp Krame, his car suddenly stopped in the middle of EDSA. So what did I have to do? Punta sa radyo, everybody deploy. Punta ang dalawang kotse sa side niya, everybody went down and secured his car. Then the driver in front radioed for me to go in to him and talk to then Chief PNP. Sabi niya, bakit ang lapit-lapit ng mga kotse ninyo? Ang sagot ko, yes sir. Bakit ang lapit-lapit ng mga kotse niyo, lumayo kayo? Yes sir. Okay, back to the car. After 30 seconds, dikit na naman ang kotse. Pagdating sa headquarters, he called for me. Siyempre, Tikas pa nga sa harap ng GPNP second lieutenant. Didn't I tell you not to be close when following me in your car? Yes, sir. Why? Para kong plebo, naaway ako eh. I said, Sir, my instruction by the soft commander is to protect you. If anything happens to you, I don't think if anything happens to you in an incident or an ambush, I don't think I will have the explanation for my staff commander and for Mam Ming if anything happens to you. Ah, ganun ba? Sige, gawin mo na lang ang trabaho mo. Yes, sir. 
Next time you're going to order me for me to bring the cars away, I'm not going to follow you, sir. So that was the end of it. Next was that I also had the chance to be with Saf, and we were able to jump with him, guy in General Velasco. And I guess you didn't know that every time we jumped, he had in front of him one case of beer, about 15 to 16 kilos of beer. So I was then nine, 99 pounds. What he used to do was to check the weight of my backpack in my heart. He said, ang ganda, ang ganda, ang ganda naman ng backpack mo. Yes, sir, because I cannot carry one case of beer. Well, I had the distinction of jumping out first in a helicopter and landing last because I was the, light, the lightest. When I was his administrative officer and we used to go to, to uh, Alabang at about 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning to fetch him and work on papers along the road, one of the things, and I think uh, all of the aides and security officers already experienced this, that he's not going to have his breakfast until we, his aide, aides and senior administrative officers and security officers were already seated at the breakfast table. We were family. The security staff and admin staff were having regular breakfast with him. Of course, healthy breakfast. Sa, sa mga security na enlisted personnel na kumakain sa labas, yun ang masasarap na pagkain. At the office of the president, we had our share of hazing. Every time we passed a note to him, Sir, cabinet secretary is here. Bo-ball out in sila. So bago sila mag-ball out, sa amin mag presidente. And what was happening there was, naka siya sa amin, so yung mga cabinet secretary, hindi na mabobol out. So ang ginawa namin, linagyan namin siya ng 5-inch monitor sa harap, na every time you're going to send a memo, or a note na this cabinet secretary or this official is here, sa monitor namin linalagay. So hindi na niya kami mabol out. One time, namansin niya. What is this memo? What this, is this uh, note all about, sir? That is our way for making things efficient so we don't have to disturb you with your note. Pero frankly, ayaw lang nami mabol out dahil sa mga cabinet secretaries na mabobol out. Bakit kami mabobol out eh, hindi sila parang ganun. He was a techie. He was, pride, he was very proud of being a techie. Hindi. Hindi, no? Hindi. No. He was very proud about the barcodes in his documents and sabi niya, kung walang barcode yan, hindi duman sa opisina ko yan, walang completed staff work. Alam ni Barry yan, tsaka ni Louis Opus. Hindi. He was proud about his instant photos. Yung 8 by 12 di ba? Um, actually, I was, I was inside the, um, the hall noon when President Clinton visited him sa Malacanang. And before President Lincoln, Clinton went out of the room, binigyan siya ng 8 by 12 na photo na may signature pa ni Presidente, nandun sila, ganun-ganun. And sabi ni President Clinton, and I was beside the President then, and sabi ni, Clinton, ni President Clinton, why don't we have this in the White House? Ah, di ba? Siyempre, President Ramos mayabang. <laughs> well, that is a U.S. Macintosh computer and printer. That is Japanese camera and Pinoy or Filipino technology. Sabay tingin sa akin si Boss Kindat ng ganon. Yabang. And he also did this even with uh, Bill Gates when we were in Shuttle ginawa din yun na nag-instant photo. Even Bill Gates was surprised how we were able to present a photo instantly. Hindi nila alam na we were bringing all of the equipment. During that time, believe it or not, the camera that we were using, si Rex Revoli, alam niya yun eh, was 12,000 US dollars, less than one megapixel. Kanya hindi nila maintindihan pa paano namin nagawa yun. 
One time he, would, he had a bilateral meeting with the head of state in ASEAN. And we normally set his satellite phone. So in case there's an emergency in the Philippines, he puts his cell phone on. He had a satellite phone as big as 25 kilos with an umbrella-like antenna. Alam ni Stella yan. And that head of state talked to the president, President Ramos. Siyempre, yabang ni President Ramos, tinatanong siya ng isang head of state na mayaman. So, ganyan, ganyan. So, when we arrived in Manila, the embassy contacted us. Well, that head of state ordered 10 of the satellite phones that we had one off. Even before the age of video conferencing, President Ramos have had a video phone. The, it's a small phone with a monitor he sent with President, then Vice President Estrada in New York. They were talking on the video phone. And what we used to do was, what, what he asked us to develop was have a video conference wherever he was. So what we did was actually talk to the supplier here and everywhere we went, we brought this video conferencing equipment, people from PLDT, from the supplier, and set it up. And even the people from New York were asking how we were doing it. As a matter of fact, the, the, one of the senior officials in Canada asked us how we were doing that video conferencing using telephones. Hindi nilang alam ang secreto was we were using four telephone lines simultaneously and we had PLDT personnel with us here, U.S., uh, even in Russia. And this, these are the things that made President Ramos distinct as far as a leader and a, a governance uh, sponsor is concerned. He, he, did not, he did not let the technology limit what he could do. He pushed the envelope. He, he thought out of the box. And sometimes he reminded us, there's no box. President Ramos was the king of completed staff work. Recently, meron pang memorandum circular strengthening completed staff work, requiring that that military doctrine of completed staff work has been transported into Malacanang and the whole government, in effect, recently. He is a very caring president. Every time somebody in the staff gets sick, Every time we require anything, he's there. Sabi niya, you always provide food for the staff. If anybody's sick, take care of the bill. And if there's anything we can do for the family, tell us. As a caring president, I'm reminded of behind a successful, a successful man is a woman. Yung mga kasama yung asawa dito, please, walang kokontra sa sinabi ko. Behind the successful Fidel Valdez Ramos was Ming Ramos and the five girls. And at the time that he was having a minor heart attack and we had to bring him to the hospital, there was no way we could actually ask him to ride the car except to call Ma Ming for Ma Ming to call the president and we had to go to the hospital for him to be checked. So kahit pa macho-macho si President Ramos, hello, pag nandiyan na si Ming, tiklop siya. <laughs> Di ba? I, si, si President was actually not just a, a boss, but also an upper-class man. Believe it or not, in the decades that I've worked with him, I have never talked to him in Tagalog. Because that is a tradition among us PMAers that as a plebe, you're not supposed to talk to an upper class man in English. So until his passing, I have never talked to him in Tagalog. For the first time, Mr. President, magta Tagalog ako sa inyo. Maraming salamat. Sa pagiging pangalawang ama ko at maraming salamat sa pagiging pangalawang ama ng marami sa aming mga Pilipino. Hindi ka namin makakalimutan. 
One of the, alam na mga aid to eh, the clicker. This is an A, B, C button. Yung A is sa akin yan, a rebel yan eh. Yung B sa security officer or aid. Yung C sa taga Xerox. Okay. Gusto ko sanang ipa, ipadala sa kanya ito sa huling hantungan. Kanya lang baka yung mga ganito ng mga aid at saka security officer mag-beep mamayang gabi. <laughs> so, iuuwi ko na lang ito as a memento to remind me of the decades and years that we've had together for him being an inspiration to me, to the Special Action Force, to Armed Forces, and to all of us here, especially to the pioneers of the Special Action Force, the Special Army Nifidel. One thing I can say to all of us, mission accomplished. Mr. President, as we in the Special Action Force would say, Sir, may the force be with you. I salute you. Also with us tonight is a member of Parliament of the Bangsamoro Transition Authority. May we call on Sultan Edrieza Rimbang for a few words. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Good afternoon po sa brother and sister na nito po ngayon. Uh, bilang naging ama natin sa ating mahal na Pilipinas, si Tatay Pilid Ramos, kami po sa Bangsamuro, lubos kami na nag uh, condolence po sa kanyang pamilya, kanyang mga anak, at sa lahat na sa nagmamahal sa kanya. Kasi kung natatandaan po natin ang Bangsamoro Arm po, Mindanao, noon po, kasagsagan po ng magulo, wala pa kami autonomy. Pero siya po yung nagdahilan na, siya, na autonomy po ang aming lugar del po sa kanya. Uh, nasundan po ni uh, President uh, Rodrigo Raditorte, kaya buo po na na autonomy po ang BARM. Pero talaga po siya po yung nanguna noong mga panahon na yan. Kaya nandito po ako bilang Sultan of Planao del Sur, Sultan of Sarimbang. Lubos po ako, kumukondolence po. At government po na Bangsamoro, lubos din po na kumukondolence sa ating naging ama di sa ating Pilipinas. Kaya kondolence po sa kanyang pamilya. Thank you very much po. May we request for a response from the family represented by my Miss Christy Ramos. The person we honor today is no doubt larger than life. He lived the most productive life of a young, right, 94-year-old. Like the Energizer battery bunny, he just kept going and going and going and going and going some more. And going and going and going. And, going. and I think truth to tell, if it weren't for COVID, he would have outlived all of us combined. And that is the energy and the enthusiasm for life that my father, President Fidel V. Ramos, had. His passion, no doubt, was also infectious to all those he touched his life with. And of course, we all hope to live his legacy. Credos defined his life.
from the United States Military Academy's West Point of duty, honor, country. He believed that one's life was devoted to the country and to be served with honor. He loved also going to the Army-Navy games, even after he was a West Point cadet. Unfortunately, I think some of the West Point alumni have left, but he had, he had always loved to be with them whenever he, had the, he watched the games yearly. Pero sayang nga lang, I think, ang Army, hindi naman masyadong maganda ang record, and Navy would often sink them. But in better moments, when West Point won over Navy, he would taunt the Navy, but of course, in good jest. When he was with the Philippine Constabulary as chief, he believed also in the credo of the Philippine Constabulary, which was always outnumbered, but never outfought. Pero sa labas lang yon. Dahil sa bahay, he was always outnumbered. We were five girls, my mother, of course, and our grandmother. So parate siya lang ang male sa dining table namin. And I think for those who have experienced being aide de camp to my father, they became our adopted brothers and were always welcome to share our meals with them. Para may kakampi naman siya. Another, he, uh, another credo he believed in, especially when he was president, was UST. And that's not the university. It was unity, solidarity, and teamwork. And another one already mentioned, of course, I think this has been ingrained in your mind, the letters CSW, which was always characterized as a marginal note on the side written with red pen. And of course, this meant completed staff work. When you saw that, you knew that you had to do your work diligently. And that meant doing your research, getting the facts straight, and going to the president with your proposed solution. Hindi po pwede na pupunta kayo kay President Ramos na, Sir, may problema tayo. Anong gagawin natin? Hindi pasado yon kay President Ramos. In other words, he did share decision making with those of his staff and those of his constituents. He believed that although he was the leader, he also had to decide and find out what would be for the good of the many. Of course, for those who have been long enough with him, whether staff or strangers, we always heard, kaya natin ito. And this is really the belief that he had with the Filipino people, that kaya talaga natin ito. And of course, with the omnipresent thumbs up, na naka-display pa rin dyan. Because he did believe that the Filipinos were very talented, are very talented, and our country can be great or greater among those in the international scene. And probably in the end, what defined his life was, ang mamatay ng dahil sayo. He believed that the country was of utmost importance, that his life and his passions were all devoted to the betterment of our country, the Philippines. Although he was a man of many achievements, may failure talaga yan. And kami nga, we outnumbered him, the girls, and he liked to define his, his five daughters as, I have three girls and two daughters. Just do the math. <laughs> he never quite succeeded in training us in his military ways. So when we were younger and we would have summer vacation, he would give us a regiment of dapat gising kayo ng 4 o'clock, dapat naka-breakfast na kayo ng 5 o'clock, dapat ayos na yung gamit nyo by 6 o'clock. 
In the beginning, it succeeded because we feared his discipline and we feared his leadership. So he would clap his hands loudly and say, put your feet on the ground. Kami naman, takot. Okay, follow lang. But this only lasted for a week, unfortunately. So none of us really ended up in the militaristic style that he wanted to implement to his three daughters and two girls, especially during summer vacation. Kaya hindi naman talagang successful si President Ramos. May mga failures din. Sorry pa. Personally, um, I have been known in sports, and he really instilled the sporting spirit in me. Not only physical fitness or the discipline to undergo training, but really the concept and respect for following laws and regulations and also having a sense of fair play. And this has been ingrained in me and in our family over these years. He would wake me up at 4 o'clock, or sometimes even earlier at 3 o'clock, and say, Christy, get your feet on the ground, magja-jogging tayo. And like a good soldier that I was, salute din ako, and I would say, yes, sir. And I would put on my shorts, my t-shirt, and my running shoes. And off we would go and run in the hills of Tanay. In other days, he would wake me up still early and say, Mag scuba diving naman tayo sa Anilao. Okay, salute na naman. Yes, sir. Okay pa, I'm going with you as your scuba diving partner. And in all those experiences, really, it was my time, I would say my private time with him, but it was also public time because he would also do it out of a sense of duty and, of course, with his military staff. Among his last words to me was, oh, don't forget to take care of our seas. And it really struck me because he was referring to me when I was a commissioner of the Sports Scuba Diving Commission, which Ma Ms. Maan Antiveros and I occupied under the Department of Tourism under then Secretary Vince Carlos. Although I wasn't there too long, it was something that really struck in his mind, which I thought was very important to him, that we should be taking care of our environment, we should be taking care of our seas, and even in his sick and ill condition, he still had a concern for our natural environment. He would always remind us Remember to leave things better than when you found them. So in other words, dapat alagaan natin ang mga kondisyones na nasa paligid natin. Huwag natin sirain. That is our obligation as the caretakers of this world. In the end, he was a true soldier of peace. He devoted his life and even, no doubt, beyond to duty, honor, and country. He may have been outnumbered, but he was never outfought. He also believed in the Filipinos' talents and greatness and always shouted, Kaya natin ito! And if we did, we always thought our voices were loud, but he would always say, Ang hihina nyo naman. Sigaw dapat ng malakas ng kaya natin to para marinig sa United States at sa Malacanang, whoever the resident there was. In the end, his life is perfectly summed up through 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 to 8, which says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. On behalf of former First Lady Amelita M. Ramos and the Ramos family, we would like to thank everyone for your concern and your care over these years. 
You have been family to the Ramos family and to President Ramos as well. And he has always shared the same care and concern with all his extended family. We had no doubts or bad feelings about sharing our father with you as he also considered everyone here as family. So in the end, we all hope that you do remember his legacy because he was a man of faith and a man of great passion for the Philippines. Maraming salamat. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, and that concludes our program for tonight.